security as as a talking point here and you know I guess that's of course relative to to the size and, and location of your of your event right but um, yeah I mean if if people are going wild and you know the, the, the crowd is is getting unruly or out of control how, how do you protect you know what's your plan to protect you know your set your staff you your staff you know your equipment you know all of your all your assets um, what was the I remember video clips here as of recent what um, last I don't know five years or so I remember people cr climbing up on what did the Cavs do something or, mm -hmm. or basketball they were climbing up on fire engines climbing up on ambulances you know all downtown that were there to post and be ready for the event. They're climbing all over the trucks yeah. and climbing. It's you know, uh, there you know you need to you think through some of those things depending on size, location. You know what you're. Well, if there's alcohol being served, that's always an impact, right? It's almost always. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost always the deciding factor. <laughs> Yeah, you need to have a safety plan for, you know, you, your team, your patients, your equipment, your assets. And then a lot of those things like you described, just they cripple you. Now they're disabling. Yeah. If you have 15 people climbing on top of your ambulance or climbing on top of your fire truck, that's a disabled unit that now cannot respond to Absolutely. an emergency. Um, you know, or your uh, fixed structures, mm -hmm. you know, like the field hospitals, if it's not a tent with some of those other structures that someone might use for a less... You know, if the event's not as long, but if you have a, a fixed a building, then, you know, you might need to secure the building. And then what are you going to do? What type of food, water, how long are you going to be in that building? Things right. that you have to think about. So if you're going to shelter in place um, in, in a, you know, constructed field hospital, some of the other things you got to think about. Yeah. Or I have sick patients in here. Now I have to manage them for a longer period of time because we cannot get out of this building. Right. We cannot transport our patient out. You know, I'm going to the extreme there, but... It could happen somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, right. If you're, the crowd is surround, essentially surrounding yeah, you, could. put you on an island. Yeah, yeah, and you're stuck. You um, gotta, you gotta react. Yeah, you know, you gotta be able to secure shelter in place, right? Uh, other planning things I've got here is uh, simple things like we talked about, you know, water and ice and stuff like that. But power, right? Mm -hmm. um, depending on. W okay the obvious answer if there's not power immediately available is a generator but that generator has to be filled <laughs> with something well it has to be there it has to be there right <laughs> you have to have fuel for it and it's got to be maintained yeah you got to yeah, maintain, maintain it yeah. and how are you going to do refuel it right how much fuel are you going to have on site on site versus how are you going to refuel it and the, that yeah, the safety profile of having large quantities of explosive fuel, fuel. yeah yeah, fuel yeah. So. Um, uh, safe storage of gasoline yeah <laughs> Diesel yeah. fuel, whatever it's running Wh Whatever it's running yeah. on. Right? And then the logistics of, back to your point, and it's all those little things, I think. It might not be something catastrophic at your event, but it's it's always something dumb, like in my opinion. It's always it's always a little thing agree. like, hey, the generator's running out of gas. Oh, okay. Oh. Do we have a gas can? No, we no, don't. No, we don't have a gas <laughs> can. <laughs> and then we don't have I got this one <laughs> gallon <laughs> gas can. And then I have, you know, well, okay, now you have to go fill it. It takes you know, 12. It's like it's <laughs> all those little things that cause hiccups, larger hiccups to, could be your whole operation, like... I don't know, take the Mohican, make, take the whole Mohican run, for example. Now, instead of being in a highly populated area, now yeah. you're in a less, you're more in a rural right, setting. Right. You could be All the gas stations in town shut their lights <laughs> yeah. off at nine. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. See you at nine tomorrow morning. And yeah. you're in a tent in the woods with a generator and that's all your power and that's right, it. So right. like all those little minor things. Uh, you know, it could mean the world to they, you or they your absolutely, patient. Yeah. And do you have food? Yeah. Do you have, <laughs> food? Do you have water? Like, yeah. these are things well, you need, right? Yeah. We're thinking about them for all the patients, but we have to think of ourselves also right. because yeah. we can't take care of anybody if we're not taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like going back to that gopher, one of their one of their jobs was deliver box lunches. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just drive around yeah. and, and hand them out to people halfway through the day, right? Because got to eat, right? Right. Um, you would hope everybody brings food. I will tell you, I don't always bring food. <laughs> right, uh, not everybody brings. Uh, <laughs> not not everybody th thinks thinks you know that far ahead. You know, I'm, snacks. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm here to work. <laughs> food, no. Some of us are trying to get out the door in the morning. You know, <laughs> <laughs> snacks and energy drinks. Do you remember the coffee? That was <laughs> that's got, the got, priority. Got, got, got coffee. 
but yeah, we had uh, power and, and lighting. You know, you, you a perfect example there was like that Mohican Run, which is a um, uh, which is a state park in here in Ohio that uh, that we have some doings with, and they have a, a trail run. And uh, but yeah, same thing. It's it it goes on overnight. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you can't just give them a single flashlight with some half dead battery and be like, you know, go start an IV, go save the world. <laughs> yeah. I remember I could give it in some of those. They, they were handing out uh, chem sticks uh, or chem lights is kind of the backup plan to backup plans here. It's, yeah. you know, you need to think about those things. Yeah. And that's a rarity, too, because, you know, it's a rural event. We're used to. Most of our things being large concerts or Correct. large Cities. venues are typically in the large city. So, yeah, that gas station's a block away. Or, you know, you get into the – let's talk about someone that's not in northeast Ohio and they're more in a rural setting um, where that gas station might be 20 miles away. And that's the closest one. Or, you know, the hospital could even be farther away uh, for them to get some of those supplies there. Or, if, you know, you get into a bad situation, maybe your other resources or mutual aid are even farther away. So you're waiting longer on them. The uh, one of the things that, depending on again how big it is, you might not be the event organizer. Of, you know, all right, if you're, it might be your city. Your you know, you gave the example of uh, your Fourth of July parade or, or whatever. That's probably being. There's not some company whose job is to organize right. that event that comes in. Uh, you know, you may be asked to tabletop drills and meetings and all kinds of stuff well ahead of time by one of these major event planners, right? Uh, you know, same thing if professional sports are, you know, doing a thing in your in your jurisdiction or, or whatever, there's going to be a whole team of people that you're going to have to interface with and coordinate with and have to establish a relationship, which from the operation planning side of things, I think is... One of the biggest, Challenges. one of the biggest things is is just you know have those relationships. So when things start going sideways, right? It's I'm not talking to this guy for the first time. Where are you know yeah. this guy or this gal the first time? We've already had some dialogue. You know we, we've we've worked through some stuff to begin with, and we we know where we're at. Um, and that can really help us. That honestly, a lot of times that can make or break. You know mm -hmm. whether somebody gives you help or they're just like meh. Figure yeah, it out. exactly. But so even knowing like, like who to call, yeah, right? Yes. Like who is your contact for this problem? Communications is huge. Yes. I mean, it's it seems really small, and I know that for us, and I don't want to speak for all of event medicine, but for us with event medicine, we all know each other. So if we all show up to work together, we all know each other, and in the institute, we all know each other. And usually, we're doing these event these events with our fire departments, our ambulances, we know most of these providers or have seen them, or maybe you taught a CE there. This is their medical director. Yep. Or, you know, they brought Laura patient to the hospital as their nurse. Like we've had interaction. So now you're flipping the script to, I don't know any of these people. Bunch of randos. Yeah. A bunch of random people. Do you have contacts for them? Yep. What's every, what's the first thing that goes wrong in anything? Communication. Communication. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> Bad. So that's, that's huge. Yeah. Who to call having some type of contact list. Um, who's in charge of what, and yeah, building those relationships is a big deal. Um, to your point of having emergency contacts, let's let's talk about if we're in a place and I have to worry about um, essentials, and I'm talking essentials like electricity and water, water. who do I call if that's broken? Like, yeah. I don't have water where I'm at right now. I should probably have it, however long my event is, that supply of water available to me in just bottled form, but what if my running water stops? Who do I call? on yeah. a Saturday when the faucet won't turn on and whatever facility I am. So having that pre-planned is is best to say, this is a call for power, this is a call for water. And if we're talking about electricity and power across the United States, Texas comes to mind <laughs> right now. Huh, huh, yeah, I know. Um, but that might be a real consideration of what if there is a grid failure mm -hmm. Not just, oh, we temporarily lose power, but there's a large event that goes on. I might have to sustain myself for days. And w What does that plan look like? Maybe it is I have a generator on site, but if this is a grid outage, what other things can I, other resources I have to come in? And are those going to be available if there is a grid failure? Mm -hmm. So if we, in the state of Ohio, um, for our Marks radio system, they have a, mar a mobile Marks mobile tower. Yes. tower that can go up. But 
if we have a grid outage in Ohio, that might be relegated to another part of the state, and that's not going to be available. The local EMA people may have a uh, um, mobile cell tower that has satellite communications, but that might be relegated to something else. Like, now I'm the low man on the totem, the totem pole. Like, what resources do I have? And now, mass casualty from a standpoint of, I'm, a, I'm in a resource-poor environment. How do I manage this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you have a power outage, it's hard to pump gas. True. Right? Yep. So when we were talking about planning for the eclipse, I know Scott went around and made sure all the vehicles had enough gas in yep. them. So in case we had power outages or gas we shortages, had yep. we had yep. available s- things within our own system to be able to function. Yeah, we had extra fuel cash. And I, I mean, let's, let's rewind even to Y2K yeah. when we just frankly expected it to happen, right? Uh, and um, I remember a service that uh, I was with then, uh, they, they brought in a fuel truck just full of just full of diesel. Um, it, it just sat there, right? And sat there for a couple of days, and thankfully we didn't eat it and went home. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, they looked forward enough to say, you know, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to go any further than what's in the tank if we can't get it anywhere mm-hmm. else. Now, that truck would have run. That fuel truck would have run out of fuel at some point. But that was at least a stopgap measure, which which I thought was you know good on their part to, to to have planned for that. We've talked a lot about preparing for it, but and preparation goes into how you're actually operating on that day. But we all understand, and I guess probably a bigger change for me as a I work primarily inside of a hospital. ED, right? I work in ER. If I need things, I have multiple people around me to go get the things I need. I have large stores. I'm never going to run through enough medication in, in just a day. Don't say never. Don't use that word. <laughs> it is highly improbable. That I've got a great pharmacist at my uh, <laughs> hospital, so <laughs> he would make sure that I know. Hi, the, the Omni cell is currently empty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Hill. Yeah, by the way, could you bring everything else down? Derek uh, is synthesizing it in the basement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've done resuscitations, though, where yeah. I burn through a whole recess cart, right? And they bring me another cart, or maybe they're just bringing yeah. me s- certain drugs I need, or we're mixing up uh, a dirty epi drip, and that's going to kill, pretty much kill a, a, a cart in and of itself. So I've had situations even in the hospital where they've called down and they're bringing me bricks of bicarb. Or yeah, bricks but I was going to use bicarb as my of, example. Of yeah. whatever I need, because sometimes we use a lot of it. Um, but I don't have those resources <clears> in event medicine. I have whatever I have there. So maybe that's. I've got a life pack 15 if I'm lucky. Mm-hmm. Maybe just an AED. Fair. Hopefully I have a glucometer. If I plan appropriately, and we are making some changes this year, that I'm going to have more tools available at the Canfield Fair now to do, like even last year I wanted to do a lac repair. Didn't need to go anywhere, and we had no sutures. No sutures, So yeah. I want to make sure we have we sutures. Suture tray and some yep. lidocaine. Mm-hmm. And, yep, mountain. No. Uh, or even just skin glue, right? Yeah, yeah. These yeah. are things that stapler I stapler or I, whatever. Yeah, a stapler can go a long way in putting things together for yeah, people. That I don't. I'm not going to go to the ER. What do you want me to do? Fine, staple. Yeah, couple sta- or a couple staples. Here's some antibiotics. Yeah. Follow up. Um, but just realize that you're in a your resource. You're at by definition resource poor. Yeah. Set yourself up for for success, but really, there's times that we have to convince these patients that. I don't have the the things I need here to take care of you. Right. I need to get you to a higher level of care than I can provide. Yes, I'm a doctor, but if I all I got is glucose and a monitor and yeah. I, had a, I had a patient that I really wish I could do a blood gas on. Because right. that's going to, for me, can I treat you here? Do you just need some air, um, some do and have some aerosol treatments and some rest? Or are you too far down the line that you actually do need a hospital and right. I need to CPAP you and send you out? And understand that I'm now sending you out, and I have an ambulance not there for my next patient that might need that. Correct. And even like the DKA patients, the DKA you patients, know, you're yeah. not able to tell at some of these freestanding events that we're doing. Are they in DKA or are they just a little high? Hi- hyperglycemic. They, yeah. Yeah, hyperglycemic. HHNC or versus a DKA. Yeah. Did they right? just? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had a, I had one of those. Uh, cinnamon rolls that are like this big. And <laughs> With that covered. good frost. This was yeah. a small one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I forgot to take my medication this morning. Your rating high, you're greater than 600. Is this just I throw fluids at yeah. or you're in decay? Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah, right. I can't, yeah. Is I that can't 601? Is right. that 601 or 1200? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You simply don't know where you're at on that on that scale. No, that's that's so uh, it puts us at an increased risk for these patients. We we can tell them that we want to go, but I I don't feel like I can take the best care of them without more diagnostics that I'm just used to in the emergency department Absolutely. that I don't have in the, in the field Absolutely. hospital. No, I mean to, to that same you know to that same end. Yes, I'm a credentialed paramedic sitting here, but I'm an EMT if something happens in this room right now. It's like, don't hit. Contrary to popular belief, none of this stuff behind me. <laughs> well, may, may, maybe some of it would work, but, you know, it's, it's there for show. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, without my tools, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm a bystander to do Correct. some CPR, right? Yeah. That's about it. Mm -hmm. That was the big thing for me as a, as a physician that I'm used to having all these things. And we're treating relatively sick patients, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, coming in hypoxic and seeing wheezing, and I can give you these treatments, and I, I want to do more, but pulling the thing of, like, do I send you to the hospital? I think you should go, ah, I don't want to go. Well, I want more information to be able to say whether or not, no, sir or madam, you need to go. This, yeah, this is like, unsafe. I, right? I, yeah, it's unsafe. I can't treat you here. I'm sending you to the hospital expecting you to be admitted to the hospital, if not go to the ICU. Right. And I think that that's where I'm at is that, if it's just a regular patient coming in, a regular ED patient that I can manage and, and discharge, I want to do that. I don't have the ability at these limited places to, to distinguish, oh, you need an ICU, not, yeah. the, not me at the field hospital. And that does bring up another uh, medical legal point if you don't have a physician there, right? As far as you have a walk-in, somebody wants to, no, 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 I, I, just, I just wanted you to check my blood pressure. Well, it's 260 by 140, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I think I want to sign off. I don't want to go, right? Yeah. Um, and we've talked about... I haven't peed in a day, and the right. last time I peed it was brown, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> but even, like, your chest pains. Your chest pains are the hardest sign off. Uh, it, especially, like, at a fair, an event like that. Like, yeah. they're one of the hardest. Like, your EKG looks good, but you're complaining of chest pain. But you also ate, you know, three gyros and a corn dog. Yeah. And you can't do a you know a rapid troponin, right? So you're like you're 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 resource limited. Yeah. So you're trying to make those decisions. And to both your points, a lot of times the patients that really need to go to the hospital <laughs> do not want to go to the hospital. Right. And then that's the harder point where, you know, Doctor Hill or Laura or another provider is taking up a lot of their time just trying to convince them yep. to go to the hospital because yeah. we don't have all of the resources. You know, I think we have more resources than the average bear at a lot of our events, but. Yep. You, you are resource limited to an extent, and you do see a lot of sick patients um, out and about. I think the last thing we really need to talk about is after action brief, you know, after action review of the, and I'll, and I'll credit AI with putting that on there when, <laughs> when we ask well, OpenAI to <laughs> put event medicine <laughs> topics on here for me. But um, I would say before you do after action, I think that when we do this at the fair, we have a First thing in the morning. Daily brief. Daily brief of mm -hmm. what's going to happen today, what our expectations are, what's the weather going to be like, what's our staffing like, what crowd, problems crowd do we see looks possibly like, happening. Yeah. Are we having special guests come in? Are we expecting a VIP and that's going to really booger up what we're going to do oh, yeah. type of things? Um, so having that, that morning brief, or even if you're if it's a large event and you've got a lot of things going on, even maybe you have a midday brief mm -hmm. to see how things are going what we're forecasting for the end, or, hey, something didn't work out this morning, this is how we're pivoting right. type of deal. Um, I think that that's beneficial for your really large events. Obviously, Absolutely. you're not going to do it just for a, a Friday night football game, which yeah. really you should treat as a special event. Like, you might be posting, are you posting your your vehicle inside the gates? Are you going to be outside the gates? How are you going to get to or from the patient, whether that's in the stands or on the field? Or are you only there for the, are you there for the participants at an event or are you there for the crowd at an event those are all things you have to work through from a pre-planning point but i think that afterwards after the dust is settled whether you hadn't after each event if there's a big event that happened you should definitely have a debrief after that absolutely what went good what didn't go good how could we make this better in the future how what did we miss type of deal and then after the whole event, have another debrief of how did the whole event go? Like, Absolutely. How can we do, what note should we make for the next time that we do this? Or even our next event, like, oh, yeah, we ran out of linens, Or we ran out of water. Or we didn't, we only had the one gallon uh, gasoline or diesel. Uh, fuel can. Yeah. Fuel can. Yeah. Or our fuel can was red and I needed diesel, so I had to spray paint it white. Those types of silly things. Yellow, but yes. Yeah. 
Is it yellow? Yellow. It's yellow. <laughs> I think it's yellow or white, right? I have never seen a white diesel can, but I'm not going to no. say no. Mm. Typically yellow. Typically yellow. Typically yellow. Yes. Typically. I think Typically. white's okay. And it oh. matches your core to your headset. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. Actually, you brought up a simple point, and I know this sounds very easy, but like a football game, huge point there to take it from a large fair down to a football game, that ambulance that's inside the stadium. Are they there for the players, or are they there for the um, the general public or the spectators? You brought that up. How about can you talk to your police officers that are also in the same said stadium yep. that now have found a medical emergency? Because if you can't directly talk to them, now they have to talk to dispatch, and then dispatch has right. to tell you, I think they're over here, and then you have the round robin game. You get the multiple lo- lost in translation. Yep. yep. Where so, are you? Yeah. <laughs> where are you really? So yeah, it's like all those little minor things that could delay treatment, delay transport, yeah. delay any of the type of care being delivered to the patient. Even though it seems really, really small, you have 20,000 people or however many thousand people sitting there watching you. So it's and you recording. have to recording. Everyone's and recording. always and every, recording. Yep, everybody, yes. yep. That's a huge point, that's, too. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> thing that we've had to change in the next decade. Everyone is recording. Yep. Um, and to be, to be mindful of that, even when you're talking outside, that you, are always, you should always assume you're recording. We make that assumption when we're in the room, right? We got mics on, we have microphones <laughs> on, we got cameras at us. But at all times, if we are in public, always act, always act professionally. Always assume someone's recording you. And it's big at these events, you know. You're on your lunch break, just you know, sneaking to get food. Well, you still have your UH shirt on. You still have all of the your you know, department shirt your on, department shirt whatever, on, whatever yeah, it you're is. Representing. Right, and you know, you're still technically. Responsible if yeah, somebody right, goes yeah, down, right. you know, you have to be yeah. able to. W- if I'm out on my lunch, how am I going to get a hold of help, too? You know, Excellent. same thing. But yeah, let's say you're off duty, you're wearing your department shirt to one of these events, shouldn't be drinking if you have a department shirt on. Like that could be misconstrued by the public. And then to that point of, oh, you're a UVer- you're a UH person, I got someone over here that's sick. Right. Yeah. No, you're, holding, you're like, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The only thing I'll say is I'm excited to do our live show for this because we'll be out at the Canfield Fair. <laughs> We're going to be doing Jessica <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gar- we I can guarantee one cardiac arrest at least that that week, if not multiple. Something to crow about. <laughs> <laughs> I said it with a straight face and everything. Yeah. Now. Straight face and everything. Laura, do you have Laura, anything you want to add? No, thanks for having me. This is yeah, great. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. I'm for excited for having it at the fair. I think it's going to be, it's busy every year. I mean, it's 500 patient average in less than six days. It's And we're only open 10, 10 hours a day. 10 so hours. we're busy. And we're, I mean, we work very well with the police and the fire departments right there. And it's great communication between everyone. So No, it should be a blast. So It'll be a good time. Yeah. Good food. All right. Well, we'll catch you next time. All right. Thanks.